You're watching Power Nation. Today on Music City Trucks, we're finishing up our flatbed with a new gas tank, a nifty intercooler setup, a Fitech EFI system, and some other touches. And then we crank her up and do some spicy dyno pulls. Oh yeah. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Mark Chris, And I'm Brandon Burke. And the last time we worked on our flatbed, we got all the old drivetrain ripped out. We put in our 300 from engine power. We installed a T19 four speed, and then we mocked up all the motor mounts. Now, since the last time you guys saw it, we got everything fully welded, everything's fully bolted in, and this engine and transmission is in this truck permanently, but there's still a lot of work left to do. Yeah, for sure. Anytime you do an engine swap, even if you're just pulling an engine out and putting it back in, there's a lot of things that need to be disconnected and reconnected, especially when you change the engine completely like we've done. Well, there's a lot of I's to dot and T's to cross. Uh, the main thing would be plumbing. Uh, we've got a cooling system we've got to do, fuel system. Uh, this thing's getting a turbo, so we got to do all the hot side, cold side, and exhaust for that. Um, but other than that, I think we'll have this thing running and driving, maybe chassis dyno it and take it out on the street. Burn some dead dinosaurs. Oh, that sounds great. Um, I think we should divide and conquer. I'm gonna start with the turbo. I'll uh, start with fuel system. All right, let's do it. All right, we're gonna use the, well, we're gonna start with the plumbing that engine power made. The problem is it's too close to the axle, so we're gonna have to cut it up and refabricate the hot side. Now I don't really need to do this at this point, not to plumb the hot side, but I just can't wait any longer to see what it looks like with this turbo hanging on here. And it's just as glorious as I thought it would be. Since our original gas tank is 75% rust, we figured we'd go ahead and replace it with a new gas tank that we got from Rock Auto. That way we don't damage any of the new fuel system or that precious Turbo 300. But before I put this in the truck, I wanna go ahead and install this sending unit. The gasket on there. One cool thing about Rock Auto is it doesn't matter how old the vehicle is that you're working on. You know what I like about a new gas tank? Is the fact that there's no dirt and debris in it yet. Chances are they got enough parts to keep your ride in tip top shape, like this gas tank and sending unit. Has this seat ever been out before? This seat? Probably not. All right, stop right there. Whoa, hey oh. Yeah, hey oh. Well, the cool thing about having a gas tank in the cab is it super easy to take out and put back in. Be careful that wire harness, you don't want to rip it. It's original. It's original. Oh, oh hold on. listen to that. It sounds like the ocean. The tanks are manufactured with a 360 degree weld and are individually air pressure tested to ensure their success before leaving the factory. Fuel tanks are powder coated or painted with anti-corrosive paint. 19 and a half gallon capacity. Perfect. Yo, you mind if we go up with this since I got the gas tank in? Yeah, the I fuel can. pump on. Sure. Yeah, I can. Uh, I can work on this from underneath. That good? Good for me. Perfection. Oh, it's Let's gonna be see here. Awesome. Well, one great thing about being able to take engines that were built here in house down in engine power and, and dynoed is that a lot of the hard stuff is already done. Like this one, for instance, um, this merge pipe on the hot side of the turbo, uh, this 300 straight six has got two collectors. So Frankie went ahead and made this merge pipe two into one three inch. But the problem is 
where it kicks over here to go under the pan to the driver's side, it's really close to our I-beam front axle here. And this front suspension is completely unloaded. So that's going to be a problem. And because we've got this pipe here that's going to come under the kick up of the pan here, I think I'm just going to go ahead and modify this and turn this forward and maybe tuck it up a little higher so these two pieces can meet right around here in the front of the engine. I think it'll work. All right, well, the hot side is all tacked in. Um, just need to take it all back out and finish weld it on the table. Up next, we're doing some pretty gnarly things under the hood, and it's awesome. Fuel system's pretty much buttoned up. The new tank's in, the new pump. All we gotta do is run the lines to the EFI. Right, yeah, and on the turbo, got the turbo mounted. The hot side's all done. It's all final welded. We got the wastegate in there as well. Uh, what we need to do on that still is we need to figure out what we're gonna do about the downpipe. It's kind of up in the air. You can say that. Uh, we need to have some uh, filtered air go in the inlet. Mm -hmm. And then we need to plumb the cold side, which is what I'm gonna work on. And I'll uh, alternate between the charging system and the cooling system. See what you did there. Uh, well, while you're doing that, uh, I'm going to work on some planning uh, because we got to figure out where we're going to mount this intercooler. It's going to be cool. I, I think we can probably find a place for it. We're going to put an OEM style thermostat housing on our 300. We'll put a little RTV on the gasket. And since these are through holes, you're going to want to seal the bolts that go into the head. Nothing like recycling old parts. Whoa, cool. You're really radiating off some good vibes. <laughs> well, there's actually more room there than I thought. Looks like the radiator hoses aren't gonna be too bad. No. Probably piece those together pretty easily. I think now's the time where I need to step in here and yeah. If you need some room to kind of work around and get the intercooler in, yeah. I'll go do some other stuff. Yeah, I'll do the cold side and I'll just figure out what we're gonna do about a downpipe or yeah. something. And if you want me to make that decision. I'll let you. Yeah. All right, let me get the cold side done. All right. Well, we've got this air to air intercooler that we've got from Summit Racing that we're gonna use here. Um, this is actually pretty small, but not small enough to fit in between the radiator and radiator support here. And even if we did have one that would fit down inside of there, the problem would be cutting holes through the radiator support, which we don't wanna do to get the plumbing run. Um, we could also mount it down here in front of the grill, which is not ideal because, well, it looks kind of silly. And then also, if we were gonna route the hoses, we're either gonna have to cut through the grill or run them in a hilarious manner, which we don't wanna do that either. So. What I think we're gonna do, because there's a lot of room between the top of the valve cover and the hood, I think I can just mount it this way above the upper radiator hose, figure out how we're gonna mount that, and then we can plumb into it here with like a 180, and then we can come right out and head toward the throttle body injection, which we're gonna install here shortly. So I'm gonna figure out what we're gonna do about brackets for this and get this thing mounted. Well, here's what I figured out for this is, um, got these little L brackets that I'm gonna to bolt to the mounting points here on the intercooler that are existing. Um, the reason I'm gonna do this is we need something heavy duty to support the weight of this intercooler, although it's aluminum and it's relatively small, it's still pretty heavy. And since we're gonna be mounting it horizontally instead of vertically the way they normally are, we need something that'll support the weight. So we're gonna start with this. And then it needs to be kind of in this area here. So in order to mount it to the radiator here, can't just put bolts or screws right through the top of the radiator. Um, went, actually went down to engine power and Pat made these little standoffs here uh, that have 5 16 holes already tapped in them here. This is super handy because I can take these pieces of aluminum and TIG weld those to the radiator tank there. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and bolt these in and figure out where it needs to go and then mark them. And then I'll go ahead and weld those standoffs to the radiator. We can get this thing mounted. All right, so this is about where it's gonna end up here. I'm gonna get it pretty close to even with the 
outlet of the turbo housing. Normally we weld in DC TIG, um, because anytime you're welding steel or stainless steel, you weld DC, but anytime you're welding aluminum, you have to go to AC, so we have to push the select button there to go to AC TIG. Let's get this set up. The 4220 AC DC TIG welder is our go-to. We've used this machine for all sorts of projects, from mild steel to stainless exhaust tubing. And now we get to stretch its legs on some aluminum. Forney 220 AC DC strikes again. With the Ford mounts done, we're gonna use this brace to support the rear of the intercooler. Now it's time to plumb the cold side. Give this a little test fit. Oh, that's gonna look cool. Oh yeah, a couple of clamps, You're good to go. Well, we already know that our flatbed here is not gonna win any concourse shows, but uh, we think it's gonna be super cool either way. Um, this is the piece of tubing that they used for the blow off valve here when they dynoed the engine down in engine power. We're gonna have to modify this, so we're not exactly sure how we're gonna make this work. We just need to get over there toward the EFI system, which is gonna be next, and then we'll get all of our plumbing buttoned up. Up next, gentlemen, start your engine. We're on the final stretch of our 300 turbo swap into our flatbed, and it's time to address fuel injection. Now, we already installed that Phytech fuel pump on the frame rail. Now it's time to actually install our EFI. Now, something to consider when you're running a boosted application, whether it's a turbocharger or a supercharger, is that you have to have a system that can handle the boost you're gonna be pushing through it. That's exactly what this Phytech Go EFI power adder can do. Now this particular model can handle up to 600 horsepower on a boosted application. <clears throat> Wiring's always intimidating, but this Phytech system makes it extremely easy to figure out. The majority of the wiring on this Phytech is plug and play, but there are a few things that you need to terminate, like the main power and fuel pump feed. And as with any project, you gotta figure out how to route the wires your own way. This system is capable of 25 pounds of boost right out of the box and can be used with a blow through turbo or supercharger setup. You can also run a single stage of wet nitrous and control your air fuel ratio as well as ignition timing. All right, that looks good. You ready for this thing? Yeah. Look at this contraption I made. Looks pretty nifty. Let me get this hat a little tighter. Okay. Right. Dude, not gonna lie. Yeah? This thing's uh, pretty gnarly. Phytech's on. Blast off. Yep, hit it. All right, ready? Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. It wants to. It's gonna have to learn. Sweet. All right, well, we definitely want to dyno it, right? Yeah, we need to get it tuned so Tune we don't it. hurt this thing. All right, but we're not gonna roll it down there on the drums. No, we probably should put tires on it. All right, let's do that. This might be the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. 
These General Grabber HDs should ride pretty good compared to the rest of this old truck. Up next, this. Well, our flatbed made it the 125 feet down to engine power, and uh, I gotta be honest, I didn't think it was actually gonna go back on the dyno. Yeah, I don't think we really planned on doing a before and after with this, but here we are, and hopefully it does better than it did last time, right, Pat? Well, it made uh, double digit horsepower last time. It was a 70 something, and if it doesn't make more than that this time, I think I'm gonna switch careers and I'm gonna become like a florist or something because uh, it should do better than that. It better make exponentially more. I think it's gonna be good, and everything's all hooked up and everything looks great. You guys did a great job. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we got the fans on, it's all strapped down, ready to go. Pat, you do the honors. You don't have to ask me twice on that one. All right, oh, gotta turn the fan on. Heck yeah. I wanna see some numbers. I'm excited. Oh, right. you look good in there. Man, I, I, uh, I got a lot of experience in old Ford trucks, I can tell you that. Here we go. Wow, so you got that all programmed up, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's crazy. This is what every farm needs. Yes. A truck like this. Yes. This is like ultimate feeder farm truck. I love the hood sack just coming right out. Spicy. succession here yeah uh, but when that thing started boosting did you see oh, yeah. going? It, it, yeah. it came to life it did the same thing on the engine dyno yeah it just takes right off so. it sounds like yeah. it's getting ready to just like go to the moon That's and then you yeah. end the bull i'm like no well, I'm, well, I'm cutting it off to under six thousand all right all right i'll play another one again okay 10 i know that sounds crazy but i don't want to actually take it over yeah. 10 pounds this this rear end this thing's got like a 587 gear in it yeah, yeah. and uh i mean, say so you're turning 5500 right now woo! which is more than we did on the dyno yeah. all right well well we yeah. gotta we gotta do one more yeah make one more i mean this thing is unkillable so i believe that yeah it's such a steep gear it makes it so hard to dyno because you have to load it so much just to get it to climb at a reasonable yeah, it rate. Needs like a, it needs like a 410. Just 
sprinting numbers, 373. Nice. 373 and 372. That's what it's supposed to do. Exactly. Wow. And it would do that all day. It's going to do that all At day long. 75 miles an hour wheel speed. 75? <laughs> that felt like 175. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm oh, shutting her down. All right. Holy. Heck, yeah. Now, see, that's a good day at work right there. Absolutely. And because we, you know, because we did the solid engine mounts and trans mount, it's just shaking decades of dirt. Yeah. <laughs> from underneath this truck. It's just all over the floor. That's what I was great. telling Brandon. It's at least definitely good that you guys switched the tires from those last ones you had, the farm ones that have been sitting yeah. on there for forever. Dude, that's mean right there. OK, so think about this for a while. You're almost at this point five times the amount of horsepower that I had before. Five times. When you look at it that way, I mean, mission you, accomplished. Mission accomplished. Yeah. I think the only thing I would change is the steep gears in the rear. The 587s oh, yeah. in the rear, I'd go to like a 410, and yeah. this thing would just scream down the highway. Oh, yeah. I tell you what, this is uh, this was a lot of fun. Great install. Like I like to say, nice hustle. Yeah. Thanks for your help. Heck yeah, guys. Yeah. What was that? <laughs> Whatever. Oh, no. I'll do the fist bump here. <laughs>